um, I have the spread laid out for you guys and let me talk here about finances okay let me talk here about where your financial situation stands and where your partner's financial situation like share resources with another person um, are are the financial aspects balanced out is there more leeway is there more give and take from one person is everything fair is everything squared away and is everything the way that it should be I'm feeling for some of you there is some very very strong financial imbalance in a relationship and you know when you love somebody you don't really nickel and dime them right and when you love them you will step up when they need help and you will also you you know how how to kind of step down when they don't offer or when they don't ask for help so i feel like you're a very very considerate relationship partner and it's really really important for you to make sure and to really be honest with yourself as well is your partner on the same page as you are they contributing enough or are you contributing enough as well so i feel like there is some massive financial imbalances in the relationship and it needs to be rectified it needs to be kind of sorted out um, i'm feeling for you you're dealing with a partner that might be extravagant they want to go out all the time they might have trouble sitting still you know doing things at home like um, entertaining guests at home they have trouble they, they might feel claustrophobic when they're just sitting in one place and not doing anything and they like to be seen and heard they have more of a flamboyant energy they want might want to go out and they might want to go to places where things are happening they might enjoy the nightlife so i feel like you the the way that you entertain is a little bit more down to earth and the way that they entertain is a little bit more other oriented so they might expend a lot of money in the pursuit of you know um, of this lifestyle okay and I feel like that's not really what you're after and I feel like it's creating financial leakages or financial drainage in the relationship I'm also sensing for many of you as well you're looking at a relationship and you're 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 happy with the person but I feel like you're looking for more drama more chemistry more excitement more passion and um, you might have had that very dramatic theatrical relationship in the past and you're longing for that and so you're kind of comparing you know that past relationship with your current relationship and it's not really meeting your expectations in terms of what drama chemistry passion is supposed to be like it's okay but it's not the optimal best and you're kind of looking at it like i care about them but i don't see myself marrying them i don't see myself settling down with them and i don't see myself having a stable relationship with them and i'm also feeling as well if you are in a marriage situation the relationship there's a lot of love but it feels like something is stale it feels like the passion the chemistry the excitement is not there and i would advise you you know during the mercury retrograde period and it's going to continue until the 23rd of december um, reassess things but don't jump the gun don't make any drastic decisions because there will be a lot of reversals when mercury goes direct where you're going to regret these things where you're also going to feel like the decision was made prematurely okay so it's it's okay to ruminate and think about these things and be realistic because in mercury retrograde time frames we also have very very profound and deep insights into things that we otherwise might have swept under the, under the rug during different times of the year. So I'm feeling here for you ultimately, I feel many of you are go, going through this major maturation process where you're re, um, I wanna say like reinventing, re-identifying what a good relationship means. And I feel like for you, you can grow to love another person if you respect their financial decision. If someone is very financially sensible, they might not be the most passionate, the most attractive, the most striking, gorgeous human being. But if they're very practical, if they're very, you know, if they say they're going to do something and they follow through with it, if they're very pragmatic, if they're very sensible, 
you're okay with that. And I feel like some of you are just like, I want that sensible person more than I want that passionate, exciting person. So you're really redefining what you want in a partnership. And you're redefining as well, you know, you want that balance and give and take. You don't want to be the one that kind of pushes the relationship along. You don't want to be the one that the burden of the, the, the responsibility of the relationship always falls on you. Like you're the person that has to move things, churn things and get things moving and kind of support your partner. You don't want to do that anymore. And so you want somebody who's on the same page and you're really thinking about, you know, I'd rather have that really pragmatic, stable relationship. In the past, I might have wanted this type of people. Now I'm looking for a different type and I want somebody to be on my same page, on my same vibration. And so I feel like you're coming into, you know, the next two weeks really clear and vocal about what you will or will not accept. I also feel this element here about having, you know, um, temptation, like being pulled into temptation from the past. Okay. And I feel for many of you, um, a fire sign here. So this is a Sagittarius, Aries, Leo, someone who's very, very adventurous and someone who's really, really just attractive and exciting. And every moment with them makes you feel alive. But I feel like, you know, it can feel very, very draining, tiring down further down the line. I'm also feeling as well a, uh, a, Cap uh, a Capricorn, Taurus or Virgo. Capricorn, Taurus, Virgo, where I feel like with this Capricorn, Taurus, Virgo, there was a lot of incompatibilities, but I feel like the two of you, there's, there's great chemistry. Um, it just feels to me like you had a partner from your past that you were constantly trying to appease, trying to please. And then the other person just, you know, never just might have taken it for granted. It could be a fire sign or this earth sign, but I feel like the person just never, you know, reciprocated. And so moving forward, I feel like you're looking for something more substantial. You're looking for more reciprocity. You're looking for more stability. Okay. Um, what I'm also feeling is I, I'm, I'm just sensing, they say here, like, um, a dysfunctional family. So there might've been as well, you know, like, um, blended families from your parents. So your parents might have been divorced and now there's like stepmothers, stepfathers in the picture. So there's a lot of just, um, uh, I feel like a, an uncomfortable energy when it comes to parents. And then I'm also feeling, they say dysfunctional. So I feel like in your own family unit, you might've gotten, you, you might've had children out of wedlock. You might've had like, um, to do co-parenting with another person. And so there's a lot, a lot of confusion here. I'm saying like, I'm hearing somebody say mom, and then um, like three women turn around and they're not really sure who is calling them. And then I'm also hearing like dad, and then three men turning around and not really sure. So it's like, it's, it creates a lot of confusion because there are so many people with the same titles, as is the nature of a blended family, right? So... I'm feeling like for the younger kids, you know, the grandkids or even uh, the new people in the household, they're just kind of confused. Like, who are these people? Who, how are they related? So I feel like there's a lot of family functions where things can get a little bit awkward, but also comical. So I feel like, you know, laugh it off. Um, it's not going anywhere. Family members, they're not going anywhere. Laugh it off and just have a good time. So I feel like uh, there's a lot of potential here for healing. There's a lot of potential here for, you know, just finding that sense of humanity in everybody. And there's also potential as well for, um, for you to really figure out, you know, uh, financially as well, you know, how, how to sort things out, how to sort things out and square things away in partnership so that things are fair between you and your love partner or between you and your business partner. So what lessons can we learn moving forward? Um, can we take away from 2017 to help us transition into 2019? I feel like for some of you who have been kind of holding on to a property, you kind of need to let that go. Okay. I feel like it's time to relinquish property to sell 
property and I would recommend that you try to you know take care of that in the 2018 time frame if you've been thinking about it for some time try to do that I'm also feeling as well uh, there's a need for you to kind of get out there and socialize more and connect m with more people so I feel those opportunities are going to be coming in I feel like the major lesson is for you not to sequester yourself for you to realize when things are not working and to try to move on a lot of problems a lot of the problems that fix signs and Scorpio Aquarius Leo Taurus have is their inability to let go and I feel like for you guys it's stamped all over your relationship sector you care about somebody you like somebody but they're not the best optimal relationship partner for you it's really important for you to let go okay it's, it's important to let go because I feel like if you find yourself financially drained or financially short all the time because of this relationship it's because it's karmically telling you that you know you're you're not meant to be with this person and if it has been you know an ongoing thing for years and years and years and you're not doing anything about it I feel like it's it's just a, a time for you to let it go and then I also feel as well um, there's a need here for you know one person to take care of another person and relationships need to be very two-sided you know like two it's a two-way street one person cannot give all and feel depleted and feel resentful so I feel like you need to kind of balance things out a little bit in that department as well okay um, 2018 is going to be a very good finance and career year for many many of you and we have you know you have a benefic planet Jupiter in your sign for the majority of 2018 so it's really telling you to put relationships on the back burner and focus on your finances focus on your career relationships they're they're really they should not distract you in the year of 2018 put them all behind you put them on the side don't bother with them focus on your financial situation focus on your work fo focus on uh, professionally networking with other people and then the relationships I honestly feel they can fix themselves once you detach that's when your partner kind of shapes up so I feel like that needs to happen for you to be a little bit more grounded and for you to be a little bit more focused when it comes to getting practical considerations kind of like all lined up and then worry about the relationship later okay so for those who are single focus on your financial situation relationship will come in when the time is right so don't um, divert your energy your attention don't uh, let it consume your life and where you have to put other things on, on the back burner where you have to put work on the back burner okay so you have a really good year ahead of you it's a very very good finance year and so make that your priority okay uh, Scorpio get back on your feet start building up your foundation start building up a new and start building up as well your financial future okay